All right, well, here's the crew. They are all, uh, I think they're looking pretty good uh, for the most part. Again, you can see that we're, we're running low on, on grass already. Um, we just did some brush hogging on the new property. We're trying to work fast. We're gonna hay it uh, probably tomorrow. And then once we do that, we'll have some uh, more ground and more grass availability for these guys. So we'll separate part of the herd and put them over there. Uh, we'll prep a group maybe to go to the butcher. And then what else will we do? And then we'll call out some that we feel we need to. I, you know, I again, I go with this debate. I'm in a, I'm in a debate. And the debate is, you know, um, when we first started, we wanted to get as many cows as possible. And I think we've done a good job of adding those numbers. We've done a very, very bad job of, of sh strategically culling. Um, and then I think we're realizing, A, the capacity of the land, and then B, the carry cost, you know, to carry this many cows, um, you know, through the winter. But, you know, it, it's a tough call because when we first started, it was like, you know, we wanted to be a, a real start to finish farm, right? You drop your calves, those calves become, you know, your feeders, and then you finish them up and you send them, um, you know, for, for processing. But I was, I was listening to a, um, a really great video um, yesterday or the day before, I forgot when it was, but it was interesting because you know, the, the lady that was doing the video said, with that method, the only problem is you're basically carrying all of these cows for up to three years. You know, I mean, in terms of, you know, you drop a calf, it's gonna take you three years to get that, you know, especially on a, on a grass program, it's gonna take you three years to get that calf ready for, uh, you know, ready for the butcher. So now you got three years and a lot, and look, anybody that does this, you know, you know, a lot could happen in three years. I mean, a lot could happen to us as people in three years. So now we're gonna wait three years to take a calf, um, the distance, I don't know. There's a lot of risk with that. So I don't know, we have to really think about, think about that. You know, is it, is it worth it to be a cow calf operation? <laughs> Is it worth it to, uh, you know, raise these feeders up and, and then get them into the finishing stage? I don't know. I don't know the answer right now. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. I know what the, um, what the costs are to, to do this, but I'm not sure what the best option is, right? Is it better for us to find um, a cow-calf operation and you know purchase those animals i mean right now is not the greatest time to do that because the market is is crazy but then there's also this interesting part of you know we we actually enjoy you know calving on the farm we enjoy having the mamas here and doing that so the other option is you know we kind of break the farm into a couple different entities you know almost like three different lines of business and one is like hey we got the cow calf operation and then that those calves are on the mom for six months and then we move them into our next segment um, as feeders and we we start growing them out and then we move them into the finishing phase so you know we can do that it's kind of the same thing it's just a different way to, to silo things and look at it but in order to have a big operation, the one thing that's going to be important for us is we're going to need, um, we're going to need ground. You know, if, if we're going to finish off, you know, get to the point in the future where we could finish off 200, 100, 200, 300 of our own cows, I, I, don't, I don't know the, how realistic it is for us to birth all of those here. Or we birth them here we send them somewhere to grow out and then buy them back, you know? So there's a couple options. It's just, what's the best, what's the best strategy? And, and I, today, don't have the answer to that, uh, you know, to that question. Which, uh, you know, it, it needs an answer. So if we're gonna be in this direct to consumer game, I think that, you know, we're, we should really be thinking about, okay, 
where could we get, how could we finish two to 300 head? And, and what's the logistics of that? And can we do that? What's the cost to do that? And, and is the cost selling all your mama cows and your bulls and just buying your feeders and establishing a relationship with other farmers and saying, hey, you guys, you got your cow calf operation. We'll buy, um, you know, we'll buy all your calves, you know, or we'll buy your all your two year olds. We'll we'll buy those from you again. I, I don't know the answer. Right. This is part of the learning experience. It's a part of uh, figuring it out. I mean, we're in the game. Now we got to figure it out. We got to figure out what's the best. What's the best financial arrangement? Like this little guy here, 177. He's two years away, two probably two and a half years away from being, uh, you know, ready to go, being the size of the guy next to him. So it's it's just a, a decision making process because it all involves time and it all involves planning. And you know, uh, the analogy is we don't want to get caught with our pants down here. And at the same time, we don't want to blow all our all our money, you know, supporting a herd that's going to take this much time and this many years in order to produce a crop because we need that crop um, ASAP. So it's just a lot of debate um, that we have going on. So anyway, we hope to get some answers because tomorrow night I got Joel Salatin coming to town. And one of my favorite parts about having these guys come to the farm and spend the week weekend with us is that uh, usually we pick them up at the airport and then Lauren and I will go to dinner, you know, with these experts. And what's kind of cool is, you know, they've been doing this 20, 30, 40 years and we get to learn from guys that have already, they've already been through some of what we haven't been through yet or what it is that we're dealing with. Uh, you know right now so we got a tent set up we're gonna have uh, breakfast and lunch being served uh, and Joel's gonna be doing some great teaching to a nice small group um, probably be between 30 and 50 people so we're uh, we're pumped for it tomorrow's our last day Friday the 19th is our last day for registrations um, but yeah it's gonna be cool it's gonna be a really fun day so we figured you know what let's do it right see like this is a really nice field we'll uh we'll have the tent right there we'll be able to walk right through the great right through the gate and get to the cows and he can talk to us about the cows and just make it a real on field on farm experience uh, as opposed to going to some seminar this is like you're in it right you want to learn about farming you want to learn about ranching you want to learn about pigs we walk over to the pigs. You want to learn about chickens? There they are. There's all the chickens, right? You want to learn about cattle? It's right there. So how cool is that, you know, to bring in one of the top instructors in this regenerative ranching, uh, you know, to the farm. He's going to come here and be able to go basically species by species. But also talk about a lot of the things that I talk about on the channel, but give some, some great input also at the same time. Because, again, one thing that I've learned in my journey is as much as I want to know everything, I, I know nothing. You know, I know what I know today. And tomorrow I should know more than I know today. And the day after that, I should know more than I knew today, tomorrow, and that day. So it's just about you know, the constant evolution and growth of oneself. Wow, all right, guys, look. You know I love these clouds. Look at those things. They look amazing. How cool. Really, really gorgeous. But we gotta keep evolving as people, right? We gotta keep evolving. And the, the, the worst thing is like, you know, sometimes I'll talk to these old farmers and I, and I like what they have to share. I think it's really great, their experiences. And, and some of them have some amazing knowledge. But then they also have an ignorant side to them where they, they feel like they know it all, right? This is how I've done it. This is how my grandfather, this is how we've always done it. And they've never challenged themselves. And like, we don't know everything, right? I spent my, my whole career in sports, working with the top athletes in the world. If I thought I knew everything, there's no way I could have helped that athlete get to their next level or to their next peak. So you have to push the limits a bit in order to really get 
you know, the most out of yourself, the most out of others. And when you have an environment, and, and this is what happened last year when Greg Judy was here, it was not a competitive environment of all at all. Everybody was here, you know, excited to meet each other and excited to learn. And how cool was that? You know, no, where you go, everybody was just like, yeah, I'm here to learn. I'm here to get better. I'm here to pick up one thing that I can apply to my, to my farm, to my ranch. And I just always found that very uh, admirable and, and cool. So anyway, we're really looking forward to, uh, to Joel coming. And like I started saying, tomorrow night, we'll, we'll pick Joel up at the airport. Um, you know, we'll drive to our friend Mark's place and we'll have a, we'll have a great dinner and, uh, and we'll have a great time. And that's our chance to ask some really great personal questions and get to, uh, get some answers on some things that we, that we have some questions about. And selfishly, that's, that's a really important time for us. Um, and, and that's what it's all about. So anyway, that's what I got. I'll, uh, I'll be back probably tomorrow with a little something and then we'll get Joel. We'll get, we'll get some action from Joel and we'll have a good time. So anyway, um, have a great day, everyone. Have a great night, have a great life and have a great, um, just have a great outlook. You know, there's a lot of negativity out there. Don't play that game. It's not worth it. Be excited. Be enthusiastic. Take a chance. Take a shot on yourself. Believe in yourself. Don't worry about what your neighbor's doing. Don't worry about what the Joneses are doing. Just do what you're doing and try to get better and better at it and push some of your own frontiers and, and do your best, okay? So that's what I got for you. Give us a like. Give us a thumbs up. Give us some love. And, uh, and we'll be seeing you all real soon. And if you can make it, to Joel this weekend. You got one more day to register. We got some spots and we'd love to have you and, uh, and make it a great weekend with us. There'll be some great learning and you'll be thrilled that you made the choice. And I wanna say this, I'm gonna end with this. You know, it's $399 and I've had people reach out and say, that's a lot of money. And it's not a lot of money. If you view it as a lot of money, that right there is a fundamental issue in your mindset. Because if you had to spend $399 and you could learn something that could make you $39,000 just with one pivot, one question that you have that needs an answer, is it not worth $399? You're, you have one of the top experts in the country that you're gonna have direct access to and you're gonna be able to spend personal time and get your questions answered and learn up close and personal. You're not just another number at a seminar. That folks is worth every bit of 399. That's worth 3,999. So if you see it as a lot of money, you're limited in your thinking, right? Because we have to make investments in ourselves and we have to make investments in order to get a return on an investment, whether it's the stock market, whether it's cattle, and most importantly, whether it's ourselves, right? We got to invest in ourselves and we make it happen. So I'd love to pay $3.99 to have Joel here, but it's costing me a lot more than that. But I don't look at it as a cost. I look at it as an investment and that's what it's all about. So anyway, that's what I got for everybody. Remember, not everything is a cost. You got to think of things in terms of investments as well. And what's the return on your investment all right we're gonna head on out of here the lady in the pink shirt needs me so i gotta go but have a great day have a great night have a great life see everybody give us a like give us a thumbs up and look at this beautiful day see ya